Hi everyone, welcome back. Just want to say thank you for all the kind words, comments that people are saying, being very encouraging. I am enjoying myself on making these videos. I've had requests to make videos on dividing decimals. Interesting that my video with the biggest view, over 50,000 views, is the multiplication of decimals. Now, when I look at the division of decimals, there's so many possibilities. I want you to look at the screen. This one I teach people to do. Look at the whiteboard. And if you look at that and go, too easy, too easy, too easy, too easy, I'm going, oh, I might have to think about these. Just go fast forward through the video and start at the further places. Now, if you could help me with more view hours, that would be great. That's the only thing holding me back at the moment is enough view hours. Uh, before I forget, I've always thought, I had a lot of people saying, can you make videos on trigonometry and other topics? I do have playlists on just about anything you can think of. So all you have to do is type in Robert Prestwich on YouTube, pick a topic like trigonometry, uh, trig equations, statistics, volume, any topic just about, and you'll come up with playlists of videos. I've got lots of short videos on most topics, so they're pretty easy to find. The other way is just to scroll down my page until you can see the groups that are there in terms of years or classes or age levels. So here we go. First one, look at how other people teach dividing decimals. So if that question was written as 2.4 divided by 0 0.2, I still like to change it, just change it into a numerator and a denominator because really that's just a divide. Then you have a look at it and you multiply the top by 10 and the bottom by 10. And what does that do? It moves the decimal ones from the top and it moves the decimal ones from the bottom and you just end up with 24 on 2 and you get into that straight away. No difficult calculation, then you just get 12. A lot of people will teach it as a division and go through the basics of division or what it is, but that is so easy. Next one. Now, these have one decimal place each. Now, we don't want decimals, so I'm going to look at this next one. Instead of timesing by 10, I'm going to times by 100 on the 100. So the two zeros means that you move the decimal place twice, so we end up with just a 35 on top. Move two decimals on the bottom. You end up with just a five on the bottom. And there's this fairly revolting calculation. Some people who are really good in their maths will see it straight away in their head. But that just ends up being seven. Now, different here. We don't have one and one decimal place, two and two decimal places. I've got a whole number on the top and a decimal on the bottom. If you thought about common sense, if this helps you with your reasoning, how many 50 cents, how many half a dollars, how many halves would go into 14. And most people are okay to look at that and we go 28. But let's do the calculation. So I need to go, the interesting part is you still times the top by 10 and the bottom by 10. Now what we're actually doing, timesing by 10 over 10, we're timesing by one. So we're not actually changing the question. That's what I call rearrange. We're rearranging the question into a better form. So 14 times 10 is easy, 140. And move the decimal once, and we've got 140 on 5. Now, I know some people will have trouble with this calculation, so I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go 5 into 140. Now, I had some of my year 11s recently in my school, high-level math, who've forgotten completely how to do this, which I hadn't done for so long. So you go 5 into 1 doesn't go, 5 into 14 goes twice, and there's a remainder of 4. There's 4 not used up. Those four that aren't used up go there, and that turns into a 40. And then you can go five into 40 goes 28. And you see the same answer there as if you're saying how many halves would fit into 14. So it's not saying divide 14 in half, which would be seven. It's saying how many halves would fit into 14. A lot of people get mucked up on that and do it wrong. So now, instead of having the decimal on the bottom, on the, on the denominator, I've got the decimal on the numerator. I didn't make the numbers a bit easier, they are both eights. So if I times that by 10 on the top, I've got to times it by 10 on the bottom. Move the decimal once and you've got eight. 80 times 10 is easy, 800. Now you've got simple calculation. Eight in the eight goes once. Eight in the 100 goes, into eight goes once. So you're left with one over 100. And then if you have to write a decimal answer, just remember two zeros means 0 0.01. So it's almost not decimal division. But let's have a look at the next one, a little bit trickier. So the top has one decimal and the bottom has two. So none of them have been like that. So I'm trying to think of the cases that you might need without showing every possibility because there's so many possibilities. Now, at the moment, I've tried to keep the numbers simple and I've thought them through. Now, we'll see what happens on these. 
So this time I'm going to times by 100 on the top and 100 on the bottom. So you're looking for which of the top and the bottom has the most number of decimal places. So the bottom has two decimal places, so you've got to multiply by 100, so the bottom becomes 9. And the top becomes, what's out for it? Move the decimal twice, what's the trap? You move it once, it becomes 6, you move it twice and it becomes 60. You've got a normal everyday 60 over 9. Now a lot of people have trouble with their 3 times tables, but I'm going to say 3 goes into that 20, and 3 goes into that 3, so if you do that first, it does make the calculation a lot easier. Now, there are some people who need to do this, 3 into 20, because your teacher will say to you, you have a decimal answer, and decimal answer and you're not sure what you're doing. So, so 3 from the bottom goes into the top, so it's 3 goes into the top, the denominator goes into the numerator. Now, I've always just put a couple of zeros here just to see what happens. This We know it's going to be leftovers or decimal parts. So 3 into 2 doesn't go. 3 into 20, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 goes in 6 times. So we've used up 18 and there's 2 left over. So the 2 left over moves over to the next zero. Let's have a look what's going on there. 3 into 20 goes also 6 times. So we put the decimal above the decimal. 3 into 20 goes 6 and there's a 2 left over. And you can see the pattern. 3 into 20 goes 6 and it's going to go... 66666 six, six, six. and how do we write how do we write that we write a 6.6 6 with a dot repeater some people depending on which country you're in might put a little line above it but at the moment i've got people from indonesia brazil uh the united states of america germany nepal all over the world and i'm not sure which system you use but i think most people will use a dot not a dash but if you want to use a dash you can a uh, yeah, horizontal line next one just a bit harder, two decimals, multiply it by 100 and 100. So that decimal jumps twice and you're left with 125 on. And I did this one on purpose because it ends up with a fairly easy calculation. But I know people have trouble with dividing by 5. So we're going to divide the top by 5. And we want because it ends in 5 and that ends in 5. So divide the top by 5 and maybe you need to go like this again. Some of you would look at it and just go, ah, it goes in 25 times. We're not going to go there at the moment. 5 into 1 doesn't go. 5 into 12 goes twice and there's 2 remaining. 5 into 25 goes 5 times. So now we're left with 25 and 5 into 15 goes 3. Now you've got another division, which is 3 into 25. I'll go through that with a couple of zeros in. Let's have a look. 3 into 2 doesn't go. 3 into 25 goes 8 times. If you don't know your timetables, you need to go through. I've had a lot of students write this down because if I want to cause a little bit of trickiness for students, I always talk about my talk about my threes, or I could say the three times tables. It's quite fascinating when I have fairly high level questions, year 11 and 12. If I put in threes and sixes and nines and twelves and fifteens, it's amazing how many people have trouble, they don't see it. I do know why. Because if they're even numbers, it's easy. If they're divisible by five, it's obvious. But people don't see the threes. So three into 25 goes eight. And there's one left over. So you put the dot above the dot, put the one down there, and that becomes a 10. Three into 10 goes three times, and there's one left over. And you can see again, every time we're going to keep creating threes. So the answer is actually, I might run out of a bit of room there. The answer I'm going to write over here is 8.3. Repeater. So that's the answer for number six. Again, two decimal places. Could go worse, but lots of numbers on the top. If I multiply, oh there we go. If I multiply the top by a hundred, I multiply the bottom by a hundred, and I end up with one, two, four, three. It's moved twice on six. Now here's where a lot of people coming up, come and start is dividing by six. No, I'm gonna go through it. Let's do it. It's six into. 1, 2, 4, 3. Now I'm going to put 0, 0, because I know I'm going to have some leftovers, some bits of numbers, some decimals. So 6 in the 12 goes twice, that's easy. 6 in the 4 doesn't fit, that's 0. And that means we've got 4 that we haven't used up, and that 4 goes there. 6 in the 43, again, if you had to, you could write your times tables. Down. So 6, add 6, add another 6. Add another 6, add another 6, add another 6, and we're going to get up to 43. And another 6, we're up to 42. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Sorry to those who know their time tables, but a lot of people don't. 
So, 6 into 42 goes 7. And we've used up 42, so there's one left over. So you put the dot above the dot, put the one there. 6 into 10 goes once. And there's 4 left over. Then you go 6 into 40 and go back to here. 6 into 40, that's below 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that goes 6 times and there's another 4 left over. 6 into 40 goes 6 times and there's another 4 left over. So let's have a look what we've got here. It's continuous 6s. So what's our answer? 207.1 and the 6s go on forever and you can put a dot there. But that's the dividing by decimals. I hope it helps. Uh, thanks for watching.